this recording, we're going to go over some of the field service management options available in the Epicor ERP system. The field service module is designed for companies who often will dispatch technicians to a customer site and be able to do services on site, whether that's services relating to an Epicor project or a break fix scenario such as an HVAC or fire alarm company or what have you. Epicor's core ERP system includes the ability to create service calls. Those service calls can actually be created from within um, case entry calls if you use that module or they can be created standalone and they're designed primarily to record an incident with the customer and then to be able to create a service job for being able to go out and dispatch the call and do work against it as well as potentially use uh, materials against it and capture all of the costs and time involved. It also integrates with the service contract capabilities of Epicor so that you have the ability to not just charge as needed but to be able to sell things like annual service contracts that cover either labor, part Parts or both and to be able to capture and analyze the profitabilities of those contracts. So we're going to do this at a fairly high level for the purposes of the demo to give you a feel for it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go directly into the service call center which is available in the field service module and it typically starts with a call number so we'll hit the new button. Now here you have your standard customer picker so in this case uh, for example I have a customer um, that uh, is called rocket fuel and I could use the typical lookup capability here on the customer and I can either start or look or search for them or I can use the ability of enterprise search that can be embedded in any field in Epicor. I know rocket field is at 195 Broadway in New York City so I can just type 195 broad and hit control shift s which is the key to activate enterprise quick search and it finds any records in the systems with the word 195 or 195 and broad on them which you can see it found here so in this case we'll right click and say return this record and now we've selected rocket fuel now like most entry screens we would insert a line here for the service call because the call could be for more than one issue although in many cases it's just one now at this point we can see if the company as a whole has any service contracts on file and we can see we have we don't have any or we can choose uh, the item or reference the original packing list or um, uh, part number or customer part number a variety of ways in this example we've just created a holding part called service for capturing the need to do field service in here we can put a description uh, for example alarm won't shut off and then the topics allow you to set up hierarchical topics for the kinds of things that you're servicing you have to have at least one topic and then you can optionally narrow it down to more details if you want and once you click save the service call job will be saved now one of the misnomers is the service call job doesn't actually create something you can post time or services against Epicor essentially recycles their manufacturing jobs in the form of what's called a service job and you can create that easily from the actions menu here you say create service call job and the system will automatically create a related service job which looks very similar to the standard manufacturing jobs now within here you do need to have at least one operation and you can use your standard engineering capabilities or go to actions job details and add an operation from here I've already created an operation called alarm repair here which has a couple of flags already set up in the operation code typically we think it's going to take half a day on average to service one of these so instead of pieces per hour it's hours per piece service so it's going to be four hours and if we go over to the scheduling resources after we uh, save that record we can see it's associated with a resource group which is used for the dispatch board as well which we're going to show in a little while as well as some standard billing rates and so forth you can see that this operation is already set up as a mobile operation because of that if you're using the optional mobile dispatch this particular service job will also show up on the mobile dispatch board which is a dispatch board that's available for higher volume people who will be dispatching technicians and potentially using handheld devices as well 
Since this is a job like any other job in Epicor, we do have to engineer the job and schedule it. So we're using the standard capabilities of job management here to engineer the job and to schedule it. And then after it's scheduled, we'll release the job so that you can actually post materials and time against it. If you know what you're going to need at the job, you could also assign materials to the job. Maybe you need a new uh, speaker or alarm panel, and you can put that right in on here, or you can add it later as the work's being done or as they're calling in what they've done. So we'll go ahead and close job entry, and you'll see now that that job is referenced to this line of this service call. Now, if you're not using the mobile dispatch board at this point, to capture time against this job is fairly similar to the rest of Epicor. You would use timesheet entry or MES to go ahead and log time against this job. However, in this example, we're going to use the mobile dispatch board. So we're going to flip over to that here, and we're going to see we now have a un scheduled job that's been broadcasted for a technician to either grab or for a dispatcher to schedule out. So let's say the dispatcher sees that Susan Paulson's available today. She can take this job and drag it down here and this will now automatically change the resource assigned and the schedule date both on the board and in Epicor. We'll go back to the service call center and actually add a second job so we can show two different potential scenarios here. So we'll go ahead and create a new call, and this one will be with Addison. And we'll do a new line here for Addison. And we'll see if Addison has any contracts. And in this case, Addison has a couple of different contracts, including one here for one of their uh, two receiver satellite dishes. So if we double click this, you can see it covers all material labor and miscellaneous charges. And again, we can pick uh, if this is break fix or recurring. Um, picture is fuzzy for example here and again if you're not using the mobile dispatch board you can assign your technician right from here which shows you as you select your technician what they're already scheduled for and if you want to assign the technician to this call which you could see under this tab which none you would say assign but in this case we're going to do that through the dispatch board as well so We'll go ahead and now, like before, create the necessary service job, which relates to the service call. We'll add the required operation, because you have to have one. And we'll use that same alarm repair operation with an estimate of four hours. And we'll engineer it and schedule it. and release it. And again, now if we go back to the job and the line, you'll see this service job is has been created as well. So we'll minimize this screen and we'll see now that broadcasted job is out here and maybe we'll assign it to uh, Phil for Monday. Now you actually have different views here. You can look at this by day or you can look at it by hours in the day and scroll and you can customize these views pretty significantly but we'll just use this view because it's uh, pretty straightforward so let's say uh, we got a, uh, the technicians not using the mobile device and they call in and they've completed their work for the day but they're gonna go ahead and they need to come back with a part so we'll go ahead to uh, this one from Susan Paulson and we will open it up we can double click it and in this case we'll say today's work is completed we can put the time in that the person has uh, said that they had spent so we're going to assume they were there today through today and we can simply say that uh, it was three hours and thirty minutes a description and we want that time submitted on recording uh, excuse me and you have to pick a activity code so let's say it was consulting and now we're gonna save this and we'll notice that the color is changed to gray because this has been completed we can now right click on this and copy this so that we can dispatch it for follow-up as well as suggest that we need parts so we'll go ahead and we can either copy it on the today and drag it or we can pick the day that we want to go out let's say it's on the 13th 
and we'll schedule backwards for that. And in this case, under um, products, we can put what we think we're going to need here. And then you can use your search here, and we'll just use the first item here, a 001PP component. And we think we're going to need one of them. And we go ahead and, um, excuse me, schedule this correctly. And oh, my mistake, you also have to pick a topic, just like before on the other screen. And now we'll see that that job is being created here. It says new because it hasn't yet synced to the Epicor ERP side. In a few moments, we'll see this be assigned an actual job number and will show up in the Epicor ERP application. Now, let's say um, the other job has been worked on, which is this one here, and the work's actually been completed. Or actually, in this example, let's say they just called in to let us know that they've arrived so we can update that status. So we can go into this job and change its status from accepted to in progress. And this way, you can keep an eye on where your technicians are. And again, if they're using the handheld devices, they can be updating these all remotely. So, in this case, let's say they call later and they've completed this. So, we can edit this. Flag this is completed. And go ahead and put our time in over here. And just pick the date that it was done. The activity code, how much time. The description. And save it. And you'll notice that this, too, uh, will change color to uh, a completed status as well. You <clears throat> can also see that we've now been assigned a job number for the one that we had created before. And that's right here, and it's service job 225. If we were to go to our service job entry and look at all of our service jobs that are available here, And we will go to the last one. You'll see now there's a new job 225 that was created. The system automatically created it. It included an operation, basically the repair operation. And because we said we were going to need this part, it put this part 0001PP as a required part. We'll close that for the moment, go back to our board. Just want to point out one other view that we have here. We can say show GPS location. And if your technicians have the mobile devices, you can actually see where they are on the map. Or if you click on one of the jobs you've created, you can see the address of that job as well. You can zoom in here and use whichever map choice of the many that are available that you want. So you can get an idea where everybody is in real time. So now let's say your uh, internal folks need to uh, gather the parts up needed for all of the day's jobs for tomorrow. You can go back into Epicor and go to the standard fulfillment workbench. And since this is a job, we'll do it under job fulfillment. And I've created a search here to only look for fulfillment required for service jobs versus manufacturing jobs. And we'll scroll to the end and we'll see that here we have that 01 or 001 PP item. So we'll go ahead and select this. This is standard Epicor. We'll reserve and release for picking. And now either people with a handheld or uh, through paper uh, travelers can go ahead and pick these parts. So we'll go ahead and pick it and then just print preview the pick sheet to screen just to show you what a typical warehouse person will walk around using to grab what's needed to be dispatched tomorrow. So we'll go ahead and close that. And now you can see it says we need um, one of these 001 PPs for job 225. And of course, like any Epicor form, this can be completely customized to your requirements. So now say uh, the technician has come in to pick up their parts and we want to actually issue that to the job instead of just having it picked. We can do that through the standard issue to service job or mass issue to job feature. And in this case, it should be that job 225, which should be one of the last ones here. And we can just sort in uh, descending order. 
and we'll go ahead and say issue issue all which is that uh, part the uh, which is going to get issued to the technicians service van say OK and now it comes out of the inventory of our main warehouse and gets moved into the vans warehouse and that pretty much demonstrates uh, some of the key logic and functionality of the field service module. If you'd like to know any more uh, specific details, because there are many different workflows and scenarios depending on the nature of your business, please feel free to reach out to us via the chat button below or call us at 732-970-1450. Thank you for your time.